Hello Chief Skaters. My name is Kath Armstrong. I'm creator of the Chief Skates Club where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. It is a very cold and wet and windy Sunday afternoon. Perfect for grabbing a cuppa and watching Chief Skates videos. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Now, I'm sure you'll have some questions or something to share. So please leave them in the comments below me. And if it's a question, if you could put it all in capital letters, it stands out from all the comments. I read them all and I do my best to respond to all of them. And I'll do my best if I see your question to answer it for you. And if I can't, I know there's a cheap scatter who can. So questions in capitals and we'll be good to go. Now, before we get started, one of my favourite things, if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. So... Wet, windy, cold Sunday afternoon. Let's get started. This is probably going to be a bit longer than I intended it to be. So enjoy your cuppa while you watch. When this room that I'm in was turned into my craft room, I did splurge on you know, a few things. Uh, the shelf unit behind me a couple of tables, one that holds all my tools that I use, the other one I'm using as a work table and your, my laptop's sitting on it right now. And Wayne bought me my pretty pink chair that I'm sitting on for my birthday this year. Oh, and those, um, these collapsible cube thingamabajiggers um, on the two bottom rows of the shelves, I picked up at Ikea. They weren't very expensive at all. Otherwise, everything that I'm using, we already had. And so I just repurposed it or remade it or recycled it to create a workable workspace. And frankly, I love working in here. I love it so much, in fact, that Wayne asked me if I'd taken up residence because I'm rarely out of here. He comes home from work. Where am I? I'm in here doing something. So back to the topic. Now you know the story of my craft room. It used to be Hannah's bedroom. In tough times, crafting and craft supplies are often weighed down on the spending priority list. And that's sad if you're a crafter. Sad for a couple of reasons. First of all, we can't craft. But secondly, because a lot of what we do as craft is actually stuff that is really useful for our homes, for our families, for our friends and neighbours and colleagues, for our community. We don't just make it and leave it. A lot of what we do is a gift or it's to serve another purpose in our home. So crafting while we tend to think of it as unimportant is actually very important in a household. The other thing is we need something that's not seen as work to give our minds a rest, to give our bodies a rest, to give our imaginations a rest and crafting does that for us. Now, I reuse and repurpose so many bits and pieces um, for my card making and scrapbooking. I love paper crafting. So I thought that's where I'd start this afternoon with this list. We'll start with paper crafts. My lovely friend, Carol, she might, if she sees this, she might put a comment below for us. She'll tell you that I have a paper problem and I need help. And she's not wrong. I love pretty papers. I love pretty scrapbook papers, pretty wrapping papers. I just love them. And I still have, as you can see, quite a collection. Now, most of them have been bought on very good sales or from the op shop 
or from garage sales or two dollar shops or online i rarely rarely pay full price for paper and when i do it's for a particular project that i simply don't have anything else that will do but the bulk of my paper has been given to me and i am so grateful if I can't think of a use for it now, if I can't immediately see it and say card, scrapbook, mini album, whatever, then I pass it on. I don't hang on to it because there's someone else out there, especially amongst my group of friends because we are all paper crafters, that can use it. Now, most of what I make in the paper crafting area, especially the cards, goes to... Um, a nursing home, a retirement village, a CWA branch, and a school for fundraising. Now, some cards I sell, and they're usually sold because then I use the money to buy more supplies to make more cards or whatever for the nursing home or the retirement village or CWA. So it's a bit of a swings and roundabout thing. Here are ways I re reuse reuse, recycle and repurpose materials for paper crafts. Tea bag dividers and I was going to grab one and I forgot. These um, are in the box of tea bags to separate the rows. These are really sturdy cardstock. They are just the right size for bookmarks. Now I stamp them and colour them in. Oh, colouring is not my thing. Or I leave them, stamp them and leave them ready to colour. And these go to a friend's school for the reading recovery program. If they're not coloured, the kids get to colour them in themselves. They love it. it. It makes something that would normally be recycled useful. Now, they can also be used to make labels, cut them to size, write on them and stick them to whatever container, magazine, holder, whatever, to label them or laminate them if you want them to last longer cereal boxes and tea bag boxes two really useful things we don't eat much cereal but the boxes are really really handy for crafting they make great covers for journals and notebooks and i will um, post some pictures over on the cheapskates chatter facebook group of a couple that i have made it's just so you can see what they're like they can be cut down to make dividers for folders and files. If you cut the top and bottom flaps off along the fold line and then just cut down one side and take the gusset out, you have a cardboard folder, just like a ring binder. Now you can leave it as it is or you can cover it. And if you want to hold things in place, just punch two holes on the side with the um, spine and thread some strong string or yarn or chain or whatever through and it can be used like a ring binder they can be cut down and used as magazine holders there's heaps of tutorials for those on um on the interwebs and i know it's not new but it's one of those old but still really useful things to remember that you can use a cereal box for because they don't have to hold magazines. They can hold newsletters, they can hold recipe books. I have some on the top shelf of one of my bookshelves that holds my old diaries and my old planners all in year order. So they're neat and tidy and out of the way. They're also great for storing um, A4 size paper and cardstock. Cereal boxes can be cut down to make bobbins for ribbons and lace. You cut them to size, you cover them with pretty paper if you want to. I do because I like pretty things. And then you use them to keep your ribbons and laces nice and neat and tidy. Now, a set of these makes a really nice gift for a crafter too. They're easy to do. From a cereal box and scraps pretty much of patterned papers. Now, Leah asked in the comments after one of the shows from last week about the tabs on my paper stack here. Now, they are just strips of cereal box. They're five centimetres wide, 
7.5 centimeters long. I scored them on the short side at 2.5 centimeters. That becomes the fold line that slips in. I can't take one out because then I'll lose the place, but it slips in under there. And it divides the paper stack up. I just use a Sharpie to write what's in the stack. And I try to put them in alphabetical order and then I stagger them so I can read them. It's pretty much common sense, isn't it? It's not rocket surgery. Um, it's a way to use them. It makes them useful, keeps my things organised and tidy so I know what I'm doing. Very simple. I can do a quick tutorial for those and I'll post it over on our website for you. But it's really, really simple. When I say quick, I mean, you know, quick, that quick. You know, if you get um, pretty packaging boxes or a really nice cereal box or a really pretty tea, tea box, for instance, um, and think of the Yorkshire tea, if you haven't seen that, well, it's nice tea, but the box is beautiful. Some soap boxes, tissue boxes often have beautiful images on them. Cut the image out and use it for something. Use it to embellish a card or a scrapbook page. Use it to make a gift tag. Use it um, as a divider. Use it as a label for something. I do the same thing with junk mail, with birthday cards and Christmas cards that are given to me. My seed magazine, when it comes, I go through it and I look for the pretty pictures and out they come. They decoupage up beautifully. Now, if I find something that's a plain colour, I'll punch out some shapes to use. And I'm pretty sure I've here somewhere. Here we go. Yep, here we go. I've got little, these are little flowers from a little $2 flower punch. And I just punch them out. And they get put on to, um, I look at it, it's so cute. There's a little gold one. Um, they get put onto cards, onto labels and things. If you have spare paper bags or you get paper bags that come into your house, we talked about um, using them for cake tin liners and stuff. Well, they make great paper bag albums. If they're too small to use for lining cake tins, put them in your craft room because then you can use them for wrapping paper, wrapping small things. You can stamp them. So many things that you can do with a paper bag. Envelopes. More paper that we all seem to get in this paperless society that we're supposedly living in. Some envelopes have absolutely beautiful patterns inside them or really pretty colours, subtle shades. I know um, one of the banks has a pinky red colour, another one's blue. One of them, one bill we get has striped envelope on the inside. I keep those envelopes. They come straight into the craft room. And they get used for mats for card making or they get cut into embellishments for cards. Um, they might be stamped, um, punched out to make a border. Or you can just stick them together and use them as um, flip books and albums. They're really easy to make and envelopes are perfect for those. Again, punch shapes from them. They can be um, scrap paper to test stamps or pens or whatever or to use as a notebook if you want to or a note, making notes or open it up and use it as a mat for gluing or colouring so you don't make a mess of your work surface. Carrier bags, another thing that comes straight into the craft room. The paper ones with the pretty pictures on them so nice. They can be cut down to use on cards. Now, one of the stores, one of the stores, can't remember, it will come to me, has a really good bag, beautiful sturdy paper, but great images on it that can be cut down for cards. When you buy something from them, they give you this bag. I never throw a paper carrier bag away. They can be repurposed as gift bags. Just add something to it. Hide the hide the store name or the brand name. Wrapping paper and tissue paper. 
paper off flowers, I save it. I fold it carefully. If it's very wrinkled, I will iron it. Pretty wrapping papers make great backgrounds for cards and scrapbook pages or to embellish bookmarks or to embellish a um, gift tag, all sorts of things. Never gets recycled in our house or put into the recycle bin, it's always reused. If it's not used to wrap another gift, it's used for crafting. Other things I repurpose for the craft room are Ziploc bags. Now I use a lot of them in the kitchen for the freezer and the fridge, but these are so handy for sorting die cuts or for sorting embroidery threads. If you're working on a cross stitch and you've got lots of different embroidery threads, Sort them with Ziploc bags. Put them in a bag, punch a hole in one corner and hook it onto a split ring. You can get split rings at $2 shops. You can get them at hardware stores. Bunnings have them. They're like, I don't know, 30 cents each or something. They are not expensive. And they're reusable. You don't have to throw them out. There's a lot of things that, um, a lot of ways Ziploc bags can be used in your craft room to make your crafting life easier and more fun and keep your craft room tidy. The satin ribbons that come from the shoulders of tops, cut them out and I use them to make bows. I use trays in the craft room all the time. I use trays to hold like with like. In this corner, I've got trays that hold the tins of um, markers and things. So they're all separated. I've got alcohol markers, regular markers, watercolour markers. They're all separated, but they're like with like, and they're neat and tidy. Um, another tray up here holds the jars of buttons and the boxes of laces. Now, the trays just help to corral things and keep them together and sort of tidy. And they look nice. I like pretty things. I use tins. Mm -hmm. I use tins, she says, as she's looking for one and can't see one. But soup cans or baked bean cans, wash them out, take the label off, dry them properly. Then you can paint them with um, chalk paint or you can spray paint them or you can cover them with paper or even just wind them with twine. They look really pretty. Um, stencil them or add some stickers to them. So, lot, uh, so many ways you can decorate them and they are so handy for stashing pens and pencils in or scissors, that sort of rulers, that sort of thing, corralling things and keeping them in the one place. Now, the lids of those cans, if you use one of those um, can openers that leaves a, a smooth edge, well, they can be used um, as dies to trace circles. Old jars, pasta sauce, mason jars, jam jars, salsa jars, and so on. I've got a salsa jar right here. You can see it even says Mexican salsa. This has got my stencil brushes in it. I haven't decorated it yet, but it's there. Um, or they can be used to hold buttons, like I have up the top there. Paper or silk flowers. So many things in your craft room, a jar can be hold or be used for or just fresh flowers old mason jars flowers they look so pretty now i also have a yarn problem <laughs> i have to make this a show on its own the yarn problem but it does get used up now yarn isn't something that i tend to save i do buy a lot of new yarn mostly from arthur Daly's, which is a wonderful discount junk type store that we have here or from two dollar shops or spotlight um on sale op shops or a couple of online retailers that i know i also have very generous friends who often pass yarn along to me and i know i'm spoilt i really am but i've also been known to see a jumper in a particular shade at the op shop and bring it home and very carefully unpick it and then unwind, the, unwind it just for the yarn. 
Now, I did this a lot when my kids were little, um, and mum would use the wall to knit their jumpers. You'd spend a dollar for a child-sized jumper. It was, it was much cheaper than buying new wool. If you can't afford pure wool on the skein, look for jumpers and cardies in op shops and unpick them. If you wash the wool carefully once it's unpicked and let it dry, then you can wind it into balls to use to knit a new jumper or a blanket or a beanie or gloves or, or even socks if it's fine enough. Lots of things you can do with wool or yarn, knitting yarn. Fabric. have a bit of a fabric problem too. <laughs> I should just say hello everyone. I'm Kath and I love fabric. Um, one of my very favourite jobs I've ever had was at Bargain Box. Some of you might remember Bargain Box fabric stores. They were amazing. I was in heaven working there. I was surrounded by bolts of the most beautiful, inexpensive fabrics. Uh, so needless to say, I have a glory box full of fabric that I am slowly, slowly working my way through. I bought up. <laughs> but another source of fabric is old sheets or old dinner covers. Seriously, seriously, people. If you don't want to use them as sheets, look at other ways you can use the fabric because what is a sheet or what is a doona cover? It's just a big piece of fabric. So pillow slips, doilies, placemats, table runners, tablecloths, PJs, blouses, shorts, dresses. Have you all seen the, the um, little pillow slip dresses, little girls dresses made from pillow slips. So cute and so simple. You do not need to be an advanced sewer to make one of those. A doona cover and a sheet, just big pieces of fabric. So think of them like that. Don't think of it like a sheet. Um, I tend to use them to cut, um, are these things called again? Jar. Toppers. They go over. Oh, I've got one in here. Oh, I don't think so. I think I took it out. I have one. They go over the lids of jars. If you're giving a, a jam, a jar of jam or mustard or something, pop one over the top, put some ribbon around it. It just makes it look prettier. It's nicer than giving just a jar of jam. Cut them from scraps of fabric, leftover bits of fabric. This um, spotted fabric came was um, a strip that Hannah had left over. She had to make a cushion for school back in year seven. I know it was a long time ago. It was just languishing in the bottom of the um, drawer. So out it came and it's been cut into a jar topper, into a few jar toppers by the look of it. I think I got six out of that one strip. Really handy thing to do. But if you've got a big piece of fabric, a big sheet, a doona cover, cut them down for patchworking. Use them as a backing for a quilt. Cut them down to make scrunchies. You'll get a lot of scrunchies out of a sheet. Um, use them to make um, window valances or chair covers or use them to... Um, book bags, library bags, Sunday afternoon, shopping bags. They can be used to make a cover for your toaster or your mixer, both. They can be used to make a cover for your sewing machine. Hannah has done that. And they'll match. It'll all be pretty. Old shoots, old shoots, old sheets. Sorry, guys. Dinner covers, they can be made into shoulder covers to put over your hangers in the cupboard. Shoe bags lingerie bags, tea towels, hankies. If they're really, really past it, rags. They never need to be thrown away. When you look at them as just giant squares of fabric, the ideas and the uses will just flood in. You will, your mind will go crazy with the things that you can do with them. 
Now, tea towels that get holy can be turned into pot holders or they can become the wadding for a pot holder. So can holy bath mats and holy, holy towels and holy hand towels, holy moly, um, they can be cut down and used as wadding in pot holders. If they're beyond being used for anything else, use them as wadding. Honestly, tea towels make really pretty pot holders, even old tea towels, because they're usually only old on the ends. The middle is normally quite good. Look, even a cheap pot holder, $1.50 from Kmart, I checked the price when I was writing up my notes on Friday. It's a, and it's a really small pot holder. Repurposing an old tea towel into a pot holder costs you nothing but a few minutes of your time. So at the least, you are saving $1.50 because you've got a basically free item, especially if you use your TV time, so you're not wasting anything and you're not taking your time away from something else. Um, old tea towels can be made into plastic bag bags, although I'm sure most of us don't have nearly as many plastic bags as we once had. We do still have them. They need somewhere to live out of the way, nice and tidy, or turn them into shoe bags, or turn them into polishing cloths. Flannelette um, from shirts or pyjamas is really soft and it's really useful too. First off, take off the buttons and add them to your button jar. Don't have a button jar? Start one. It can be any jar, just as long as it's a jar that will, you can put a button into then take a look at the fabric. It can be used to make soft hankies. Much nicer to use when you have a cold instead of tissues. Tissues are rough on your nose. It can be turned into dusters. It can be They can be um, used to make smaller versions of what they are, so smaller PJs or smaller shirts. My mother was a whiz at this. She would take an adult garment and cut it down to make a smaller version for a child. She'd buy men's suits from the op shop for you know, however much they were back in those days, $2, $3, $5, and she'd cut them down to make my brother's good clothes or to, or she'd buy old overcoats and cut them down to make overcoats for us. We were always well-dressed. It was always on a tight budget. And we always had one-off clothes. Nobody else had what we had. So before you put clothing in the rag bag or donate it to the op shop, have a look at it and think about another way you can use it. Is there a way you can repurpose it? What can you do with it? Um, I think I need a drink. I'll take a mouthful, guys, of my cover. That's... Um, quite a list of just recycling and repurposing things that we already have around our homes to use in the craft room. I haven't even touched on where to buy things other than you know the odd mention of a $2 shop or an op shop. So I might need to stop here. This has turned out to be a bit longer than I thought it would because I have so many, so many ideas and all weekend I've been going, oh, I do that and making a quick note of it. Um, so, But I think we'll just call this part one and finish off. Part two can be all the ideas that you've been sending me on our Cheapskates Chatter Facebook group. Um, you guys are really inventive, really, really inventive and the list is quite long. So I will be really happy to come along with part two and add your ideas to mine. Before I go, I want two things to say to you. Don't keep stuff because it's useful if you're not going to use it. If you do that, it just becomes a problem and that is hoarding. We don't hoard. We prepare for the future, but we don't hoard. You are better to sell it, to share it, to donate it. Don't keep it if you're not going to use it. And the second thing, if 
if you have ways you repurpose cardboard or paper sh or sheets or tea towels, rolled clothes, share them in the comments below because we all like to learn something new and I will try and keep track of them and include them in part two. I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can um, save money with your crafting. Don't think of crafting as an expense. Don't think of it as a waste of time because most of the time it's not. I know I knit. I knit dishcloths, but I use those dishcloths. I use them in our kitchen. I use them as gifts, but I also use them to bring in money to our household because I sell them. So while I might, you have to get over this, well, I'm just knitting. No, there is a purpose for it. If you, you know, it, you're not just knitting. You are doing something to benefit your family and your home. So enjoy your crafting. Enjoy your crafting on a budget, especially in these dire financial times. And just know that crafting is an essential part of homemaking and it's an essential part of who we all are. If you've made it through this far, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Um, YouTube likes to see lots of thumbs up. So please do that. Please like us. Um, and remember, if you're not already subscribed, just click the subscribe button below me. That means you'll be notified. Oh, and the bell. And you'll be notified when we upload a new video or go live. And if you know someone who might like this video or who might like to know more about, or you think might like to know more about Cheapskates Club, please use the share link. All it does is send all the share button. All it does is send them a link. We don't harass them. They don't get anything else from us. And then it's up to them. Have a great afternoon, everyone. And I hope I see you all in the forum very soon sharing your cheapskating experiences. Enjoy your weekend.